Okay, so uh, my topic for today is how I build a static site generator with Gulp. Anybody heard of static site generators here? All right, cool. So let's let me go on for this for a little bit. Like, I am Zell. Basically, you can follow me at, on this Twitter or you can go to my website or a blog on things I experiment with. And so the question is, why do I want to make a static site generator with Gulp? Like when we think of static site generators, right, we usually think of Jekyll and Middleman and things like that. For me, I want to make a blog out of it. Like because Jekyll is like a blogging thing, so I want to make a blog because I didn't want, I didn't want to use WordPress anymore. That was one of the initiatives behind this. Then the second one was to prototype anything quickly in front end. Like I said, these things come to mind. These are the two main static site generators on the market, so middleman and jackal. And then I didn't want to use Ruby, that's why I didn't consider this. So then the next one came like JS stuff. There's Assemble, there's Metal Smith, and then there's Winter Smith. A lot of other things that are built on top of some random stuff which I didn't use and I didn't want to learn so much. So I didn't care about them as well. Then, like I said, um, this thing came to mind because I worked with Pattern Lab for a while. I really like how modules came together to create a website with different patterns. So like when I worked for the DevFest website, I was experimenting with a simpler version of the static site generator. And like you can do like data behind and everything gets binded quickly. I think your flux is on. Sorry? Is your flux on? Uh, no, it's, it's not on Flux. Mine is just like pure, pure JavaScript. And no, 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 pure no, screen. Oh. It's Sorry? very yellow. It's very yellow? It's not. Oh, yeah, my Flux is on. Okay. No, 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 no. It's, it's like vintage. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. Let's just leave it on. Then. All right, so in short, I just want to make it like super extendable. So any, I can just go on there, whip out a quick website and like, very quickly with all the templates that I need. So, like, basically, let's do a demo. It starts the, the whole static generator site starts with one command. So, just running gob will start the whole thing. So, this is my terminal gob, and it runs stuff, making sure it cleans, do like checks. Uh, creates the pages, creates the posts, and stuff like that. And then when it's served, it can go to localhost 3000 to look at the site. Basically, there are a few things about this site. Um, there is a set of data that persists throughout the site. This is like normal like global data, what I call it. So you can use this for things like uh, your site URL, site username, or for <coughs> SEO stuff that you need to have. And then, yeah, this is what it does. The must-have parts of this is to create pages, you create the posts, and you create... Uh, sorry about the testing. I was testing something and then forget about it. So basically, you have to create posts and pages. Like, the thing about this site is that you can hit to like block, and these are some blocks that I have pre-set it up. So one page has about five blocks in total. And then when you click on this, there's a link to a post. And you can write markdown and stuff like that. So if I show you the um, code in here, this is what it looks like. All the posts are just things like this. So you have the YAML yeah, file on the, at the top where, you give, where it gives the title and the command links and stuff like that. And if you take a look at the URL here, you, you will notice that it's a pretty URL. If you have worked with HTML, you'll know that if, to get this pretty URL, so you have to put it in such a way that it has to go into the folder name, so in this case, training123 slash index.html. If you do it the other way, it will be like work.html instead, which is kind of crappy if we want to put it out there for people to read through. So this is one of the, one of the challenges I have to go through. So it does a PD URL with the permalink that is stated here. So that permalink is training one, two, three. So if I change this thing to um, I don't know, testing training 
for example, <coughs> then if I go back to my blog, the first one becomes testing training. So it gets updated immediately. Then um, creating, like if you work with WordPress, how I define pages and posts are like somewhat like WordPress related. So posts will be blog posts, basically. Pages will be things like index, about, um, those kind of pages. If I hit back here, like this, return in Markdown, for example, is a page where it goes to like slash Markdown straight away. So that's how I define things to me. And then blocks and tags, uh, I showed you the blog page just now. You have links to multiple different pages. You can, you can link to different tags at the same time. So all these are automatically generated in the whole process. And then there, there are like templates, uh, things that you can use to get this data out. Um, yeah, extras, pretty URLs, like one of the things that's very important. Multiple data sources is one of the things that I cannot live without. Like for example, uh, what we usually do with the static site generators and stuff like that when coding is that we have one big data JSON. So when it gets large, it gets complicated. And it's quite, uh, uh, I'll go through one by one. So pretty we are, we've done through. So data sources, the first part is front matter. So like we got the title and the permalink and text from the front matter. There's also, you can get data from any other file. So you can use this data thing in the, in the front matter to get data from anywhere in your project folder. So in this case, I'm getting from the data folder and about.json. Finally, uh, you can write in Markdown. So like here, this translates to a normal lorem with uh, a p tag. This more is like a WordPress segmenter. So Anything above the more will be the summary in your blog post. Anything after that will be content that's only shown on the blog post itself. Then in pages, you can like write markdown just like this, with a markdown bracket. So this, uh, I'm using nunchucks as my template, generate, template engine, if you're wondering. And I made this thing as well, so you can use like, uh, the, the plugin is not what I made, but you can use it in this way. So basically what this does is, oops. Uh, so, yeah. So over here I had markdown fragments in the additional data page. So we hit the additional data sources. This is the Markdown fragment. And this fragment is found in templates, fragments. So you can just write Markdown and then it will appear anywhere as you want it to be. Uh, the syntax highlighting, the code highlighting is done as well. <coughs> so, okay, that's about the process. So there are basically four tasks in here to create the page, the post, the blog, and the text. Creating a page is the simplest of all, all of everything. So I pipe it through a front matter first, then get some global data and go through a custom nunjuk template thing that I've wrote. That the nunjuk template basically gets all the data sources and feeds in the template, then creates the page itself. Then we run it through pretty URL to get the nice URLs over there. The post is a little bit longer in a way because we have to go through markdown first and then you have to get the summary you have to get uh, for me I wanted to write it in a certain I have to I want the, the file name to be in a certain date or certain type of file name so this has to change then get the correct formatting get the correct get all the tags get the blog and stuff then send it through the nunchuck templates this text right gets this text and post gets to the next two uh, task which will help to create the blog and the text. So these four things mix up the whole static site generator. And there's a custom coded nunchuck template which I can show you if you're interested but it's going to be a bit dry. So anyway, templates, there are, there are four different kinds of, five different kinds of templates. I had a layout template, 
for all the SEO stuff and all the CSS stuff that it's common for all pages. Then I have the blog template for all the blog archives. Like for example, for here, you see for article and articles, you'll be looping through the five different articles that I have on my blog page. Then you can get all the links and titles and all that stuff. They are generally, if you are, if you know this, the title will be from the title parameter, and formatting will be from the formatting parameter. So it gets the data from there. Then there's a tag template, which basically is the same thing, just for tags. And the post template. So one of the more interesting things is that this body here is the entire markdown file from the post. So we, I converted all the Magna content inside the Nunchuck templates uh, custom code. And for pages, right, because pages can be different, so they use themselves as their template to output the code. Yeah. So the similarities between the templates are that yeah, they all extend the layout template, so I don't have to rewrite a lot of stuff, like the SEO stuff. Then they contain multiple data sources. Oh yeah, did I say that you can use like front meta in the pages itself as well? So that gets the data if, there's, if it's required. Then you can get SEO, you can do like, of course Markdown is one of the things I use often. So Markdown is damn, pretty damn important to me. Um, code is not av available publicly yet, but we can talk about it or I can even show you the code. Yeah. Uh, once again, if you want to get me like outside of here, then so that's my Twitter account on my website. Or you can check later as well. Uh, Shameless plug, I'm writing a book on automating workflows with Gulp. So if anyone is interested in learning how to like automate their front-end development workflow with Gulp and other tools, this is the book I'm writing. Um, you can check it out at this page. I'll upload the slides. I'll, I'll get the links to the slides uh, later. And that's it. Any questions or anything? In your templates, you had what looked like Shopify type code. One was canonical. You had some kind of, you know, with the mustache and the percent, something canonical. What's that code? I've never seen that before. You mean? Block yeah. canonical. This one? Block canonical. This is from the Nanjaks template. Basically, it's a template inheritance. It resembles something like Jinja. So what this does is that it goes into, all right, let me just show you the code here. So that in the next one, OG type, that's your SEO? Uh, layouts. Like for example, block canonical. Basically what I'm saying in here is that, okay, in this position, I define the canon canonical tag or the canonical block. And in my pages, or uh, in my block, for example, I say, okay, for this block, the canon, the canonical is like that. So it replaces the, the original one, if there is a replacement. Otherwise, it would just use the same item. Yeah, so. Why should I do a static website? And also, have you written any books before? I have written some of them, but let's get back to the static website first. Uh, uh, why should we do a static website? Because it's a lot faster. We don't have to go through a database to get the content. So you have heard of like you, you have heard of things like you have to create a cache for the database before to speed up the website. So if you're on a static website, it gets loaded up immediately without having to like wait for another trip to the server and things like that. So it gets, uh, people get to read it quicker and faster. And are there limitations to it? Currently, you can't have like logins and stuff like that if you're having a static website. So basically it's good for things like blogs, but if you do need membership sites, then you have to turn to other sources. Mm -hmm. And yes, I have written another book that's called Learning Suzy. Uh, So this, oh, what's this? Yeah, okay. So Suzy is basically a framework on SAS, 
that helps to write layouts quickly. So what this does is that if you have like say normally when we use bootstrap, but bootstraps you have to use things like column MD9. So that adds to the complexity in HTML. What Suzy does is that it ex extracts all of this back into the CSS and you can control your layouts exactly as you want it without having to do a lot of HTML manipulations. So it's like a framework you can do like multiple stuff with code like this, like content and this will be eight columns for example. So it helps with reading, uh, it helps with designing with Greeks as well. Yeah. So the whole thing is about with how to use Suzy, you can get seven free chapters, which is basically like one third of the book, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, how often do you regenerate your static pages? Right now, because there's very few pages, I basically regenerate whenever I say it. So does it mean that every time you write a new post, you have to regenerate the whole distribution? Um, basically, you can do it in such a way that, like, after you write, after you have written a new post, right, you can write a command say like gulp deploy or something, and then it deploys by building your stuff, checking everything is fine, and then it yeah, goes yeah, I mean, to the building process. Does it have yeah. to rebuild the post that you did not modify? Uh, so it doesn't. Your, it doesn't have to. Okay. So, like for the archive pages, like the blogs and the tags, you definitely have to because if you add a post at the top, then you have to rebuild the whole right. thing. But if you didn't, then it it doesn't have to. Okay. So yeah. only those pages that have been modified. Yeah. But if you think about like a dynamic website, right? I, I can't believe how long we've been doing this. Uh, we've been building things which literally run the exact same code to generate the exact same content thousands of times. It's just total madness. But people do this all the time. Even like people using like uh, databases, you know, instead of writing exactly the content that you need so that you can retrieve it in a single read, it'll do a thousand joins to generate some content over and over and over and over. It's just stupid. Um, it really is. Um, uh, and yeah, caching, caching, but then you've got the complexity of caching. caching. So, yeah, this, this can handle caching as well. So, uh, there's a cache bus thing in the optimization phase just before uploading. I didn't show it because there is kind of thing. Like, you can use it, it will cache bus the CSS and JS whenever it makes a new build. So, you don't have to worry about caching. So, so one of the little extensions you could do. Uh, I did that with my little generator. It's like I generate the page and I look, is it the same thing as I generated last time? And if yes, I don't touch it, so my file data stay, stay the same. And only the pages that really get changed then uh, get a file data. So you can quickly look in the directory which of them has been updated. Yeah, definitely. One of the ways that we can do this with Gulp is to check whether the output files are newer than the. Check whether there is any newer files. Like check the file dates between the the source files and the output files, and check if check the, it. Check the binary content is yeah. much better. That's that's one way. Checking the binary contents is another. We can even check things like the layout of the page if anything has changed, like with Phantom CSS. We used MD5 before five for the same reason. Okay. Any other questions? Oh. How do you write it? <laughs> <laughs> I write my books all in Markdown. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Everything. Yeah, everything in Markdown. Who, who's your publisher? Me. You nice. self-publish. Okay. I put it out on um, my own website, and they just sell from there. Cool. Uh, would you recommend using like GitHub Pages for the output, posting the output? Um, possible. Like GitHub Pages is quick and fast, but the only thing is, uh, I think you have to publish your book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I used to use another uh, Ruby base uh, mm. static generator, and every time I do that, I just create a commit, and because Git diffs the thing, and you just shift for um, yeah. push whatever that's different. Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, Jacob, yeah. Jacob. Yeah. Basically, uh, what I want this to do is, you don't have to push to GitHub if you want, if you don't want to. Like I push to Amazon for a test, yeah. for example. I can push to any other servers. S3, so you don't need a web server at all. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
the DevFest website actually uses that? No, the DevFest website uses an older version of this. Okay. <laughs> it uses something like that. Yes, it uses something like this. So you say that you didn't want to post to GitHub because you want to protect your source, right? I was just wondering, like, what? Well, there's, there's Which nothing I like, um, like, I think I want to protect my source in a way because sometimes I don't really want to put things on GitHub because it's not ready for things to be out there yet. Like, if I put this up and then people start asking me questions, uh, do I continue developing this for myself or do I answer the questions? Or, because like issues can come and go. I thought this was uh, talking about posting the blog posts on GitHub. Um, it posts your whole source code up as well. If you have to, if you want to use GitHub, you don't want to support the oh. system for it. Oh, okay. Because the way I did it was only the published pages oh, really? will be on GitHub. Then, so I'll, yeah. then I'll have to check that because yes. I'm not I sure regarding that. this. Uh, I'm not very familiar with GitHub pages right now. Okay. okay, I can check. I mean, uh, have you have you been done like a business workflow for doing draft draft drafts? Yeah. Uh, not yet, but I think we I can cook something in. Yeah, maybe like a front matter will be like drafts, then don't publish or something. Like everything will be in the front matter.